Hey guys, so I thought I'd uh, go over in this video just what uh, what uh, it costs to build this unit. Greg had asked and I figured I'd break it down and uh, and figure it out. Uh, I don't have exact numbers because some of the stuff I had, some was salvaged parts and all that fun stuff like that. And uh, some stuff I know you could get a lot cheaper than, than what I'm going to say here, but I'm just giving the worst case scenario kind of a thing. Now for the most part the electronics there's not going to be any flexibility in the uh, price on that because that's that's fixed. Uh, you won't get any better deal there unless you can find a used one of any of those components. But uh, nevertheless, so let's go over all this stuff here. Okay, I'll look at my list here, and the electronics are the the most expensive part. You know, basically everything in here is a majority of the cost. You know, well, certainly. Uh, from my calculations, about a third of the cost, just this, just between these uh, things here. Um, the uh, Arduino board, which is basically the computer, is only about thirty bucks. I've seen it for twenty-five. You know, and I don't think it really matters that much what model you use, uh, but nevertheless, you know, about thirty bucks. So it's pretty trivial. Obviously, you need a, a PC to uh, program it, and you also need the software, which is free off their website. Um, the most expensive single piece, I, I'd say, is this controller here. This is the motor controller. I can't tell if you can actually see it or not, but there it is right there. And it's, uh, I bought the top end one because I was using the bigger motors. And that's a Sabertooth uh, 2x60 amp uh, controller. Uh, that one right there is about 189 bucks US plus shipping. Uh, if you went with the cheaper one, it would be, uh, um, oh, I think I wrote it down here, 125 And that's about half, a uh, little less than half the uh, current that this one is capable of. This one is more than enough for the, uh, for the 60 watt or 600 watt motors. Uh, the other one would be perfectly adequate for the 200 watt and leaves you a lot of room for uh, for movement. This is 60 amps a channel. These motors are rated for 36 amps each. So, you know, like you got way more than uh, enough uh, uh, spare, you know, like uh, for that. And considering the fact that this controller is also supposed to be good enough, good up to uh, uh, 120 amp surge, you know, like it's way more than enough. You know, like quite frankly, the other one wouldn't wouldn't have been quite enough for these if you used maybe the 40 400 watt motors it would have been adequate uh it would be perfectly adequate for uh for 200 watt motors uh one thing i didn't use and would have made things a lot easier is something called the arduino proto shield which is just a gives you a better and easier wiring point for this all i did is i just took headers and i soldered wires onto them and it was a pain in the butt and i think that's part of the reason i'm having trouble with my uh um, with my uh, gyroscope uh, intermittently. Uh, the other thing you need, and this depends upon how you decide to go about it, is the uh, joystick and buttons. Now I just went with the PlayStation 2 controller. I already had one. I already had a connector for the other end. It was just an extension cable. So that stuff was free for me, but if you decide to go the same route that uh, that the uh, designer went uh, when building one. He bought an analog joystick, uh, arcade uh, joystick, and uh, buttons. And I'm going to guess that that's going to be, you know, maybe 50 bucks. I, I don't really know the the analog joysticks I saw on eBay that were um, arcade style ones were actually quite expensive. They are 150 a piece, but you could use something like an old analog joystick from a computer and adapt that in. Now, of course, you need moderate electronics experience to be able to build this thing, but but uh, it's not too, too bad. And then the gyroscope accelerometer unit, which is the thing that's mounted to the frame down there with a zip tie. I've wrapped it in tape, so it's you know somewhat insulated, but it's like 36 bucks from SparkFun. Uh, batteries and charger. Uh, those are the two batteries I, uh, I used. They were actually part of a... Of, of a Lawn track, or sorry, a lawnmower uh, unit. 24 volts, 20 amp hours. They were pretty much the biggest amp hour batteries I could get. They were about 129 bucks for the batteries. 
and uh, the charger I think was about another 40. That's the charger right there. It would be nice if it was a faster charger. It takes quite a few hours for it to recharge those batteries, but uh, you know, what are you going to do? You could choose something different that would be cheaper. Um, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't use uh, cordless drill uh, batteries. Uh, you know, if you had an old broken cordless drill but you had good batteries, you could, you know, cut the handle off of it, then you get the right connector for it, and you've got the charger as well. And those things charge pretty fast as well. Just wouldn't, light isn't as likely to have the same uh, capacity. Like 20 amp hours is a pretty good capacity for uh, a set of batteries. Um, tires, I had these tires. I don't remember what they cost me. I couldn't find them on the website of the company. I couldn't find anything equivalent. I'm guessing 50 a piece, but that sounds way, way more than I think I paid. I think I paid on sale probably 25 bucks for these tires. But I don't remember. Honestly, I bought them years ago, so I couldn't even say. They just sat in the top of the shop. Now, I thought about using mountain bike tires. And those you could get for, you know, for next to nothing. <coughs> from any used bike shop. <coughs> the only disadvantage of those is that, uh, is that they uh, are a much taller tire. And uh, consequently, it's higher gearing. You know, so you're going to need a higher torque motor to do the same thing, or you're going to have to gear it down even more. Now, the guy who, uh, well, I'll get to that later on. I'll talk about the motors later on. Chains and sprockets, you know, I'm guessing 50 bucks. Um, the bearings, these uh, flange bearings that you can't really see too well there, but that I've used on each axle. I think I paid a fair bit for them, but I saw them on eBay. They're pretty much exactly the same thing for 10 bucks a piece, so 40 bucks for those. Keyed shaft, I bought that twice. The first time I think I paid 30 bucks for it. Maybe it was even 20, I don't remember exactly. And that one wasn't a very good quality one. Um, I paid 60 for the for the next <laughs> one. You know, your mileage may vary. You might be able to find something better, or for that matter, you could just buy a piece of cold rolled, uh, you know, round stock, three quarter inch or whatever you need, and, uh, and cut a keyway in it if you have the facility. Uh, wiring, you know, it was stuff I had lying around. I cut up a booster cable for the heavy duty stuff. You're going to need, you know, connectors for the ends. I don't think it's going to be very expensive. You know, like that's just too hard to figure out what that is. Um, the structure for it, like the one inch uh, uh, pipe I'm using. Um, note I say pipe. This is uh, not tubing, it's pipe. Uh, one inch inner diameter, it's about a one and a quarter inch outer diameter. You know, I had it. That was an old gate that was lying behind my shop. Got another one there as well. That's the same thing there, the old page wire gate. There's another one there. These ones are a little bit too wrecked for that one. Or to really be much use, but nevertheless. So I can't even guess what that is. There's probably, I think I figured it out. Did I actually write? Yeah, about 18 feet of it in this thing. Probably more actually, because I, I didn't take it to mount the cross piece and all that other stuff like that but you wouldn't have to build this way matter of fact if you built the smaller one you'd need a lot less material and probably you could get away with just some uh, two by two tubing to make it a uh, square tubing I'm thinking solenoid I had that a while ago I bought that from Napa I don't remember what I paid for it I looked on eBay I found you know 200 amp relays or solenoids or contactors whatever you want to call it uh, 24 volts for 50 bucks, so that's that's about what that is right there. Uh, project box, this thing here, I don't know, 20 bucks. I said I don't think it was that much. It might have been 10, might have been 15, could have been anywhere in there. I doubt it was more than 20. Um, motors. Besides the electronics, the motors were the second most expensive thing, and that was because I bought the highest wattage motors I could find. These are 600 watts each. Um, they were, the two of them shipped was $230. Uh, you could easily cut that price in half if you went with the 200 watt ones. Um, I like the ones that the other guy, uh, from the guy who did the side chair, uh, did. They actually had uh, a gear reduction on them and I think they were 50 bucks uh, a piece. 
Uh, in his Instructable, he actually mentions where he got them from. I think it was Oatly Electronics. And uh, I actually thought they were pretty cool. And if I was going to do a smaller one, I would probably get exactly those. Because it wouldn't have... He didn't need anywhere near the kind of ridiculous gear reduction I got here. And I could even use a little bit more gear reduction as it is. Uh, it, my gear reduction is about 4 to 1, by the way. Um, I think that's most everything. Now, now all told, not including the seat, which I had as well. Because um, you could spend 300 bucks on a car racing seat. Or you could spend, you know, get it for free, you know, from a scrap car. Um, so I haven't included that in the price. Um, all told, I figure, you know, using the numbers I've, I've told you here, there's probably around, you know, it was just under $1,000 for all the parts in this. I don't think it actually, you could do it for, for or you'd have to spend that much. Um, you know, the electronics were the biggest part of it. You know, like, I'm just looking at it right now. And batteries included, it would be around 500 to 570 bucks for the electronics. Uh, not including the motors. So the motors were, were a big part of it. Basically, the motors, the mo electronics, including batteries, motors, uh, was, you know, three-quarters the cost of this thing here. So, you know, like, you could... Uh, get some of those uh, Razor scooters. I don't know what uh, watt motor uh, those are using, but you could get, apparently those are available a lot of times at garage sales. I've certainly seen Musty One uh, snag a bunch of those, and I don't think he paid a lot of money for them, and certainly he's not going to be paying 50 bucks for one of those things, and you'd get yourself a good set of motors out of, uh, out of each one of those there. Probably, I'm going to guess they're probably 200 watt ones, but I couldn't even say. I couldn't even guess. Um, you know, all told, if you went with different tires, um, different motors, the lower wattage uh, controller, um, I think you could probably knock easily, you know, several hundred off of it. You know, all told, you know, you're not going to get away with it for less than I'd say probably 500 just because of the electronics. Uh, well, what could you do it for? The electronics alone are about 330 bucks for the low end or 400 bucks for the high end. So batteries, motors would be whatever you can do for that. So depending upon what you had, you could probably do it for under 500 if you had the stuff, or if you got some good deals on things, or if you got salvage parts, that sort of thing.